What do you say to the people that are feeling very bearish? I'd understand why people are bearish because, you know, the Fed essentially was planning to give the economy a heart attack by raising rates at the fastest pace ever uh, to kill inflation. And how the economy fared was a secondary consideration. Um, but here we are more than a year after the last hike and the economy's actually doing pretty well. So you're, 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 there's an expiration of the risk of a recession. And I've been following markets for almost, or actually for more than three decades, believe it or not. And um, so I've experienced and covered many recessions. Um, recessions rarely happen whenever you, when markets are all saying a recession is imminent. Uh, markets participants aren't that smart. So the fact that so many people think a recession is imminent and it, and we see it, I mean, we do many meetings with clients, institutional investors that view recession as their base case. Hmm. I mean, that, that, that would just mean everyone suddenly is a great forecaster of the economy. And as you know, nobody can forecast the economy. We don't try to forecast the economy, but the only reason we think a recession is less likely is because everybody thinks a recession is likely. Um, but logically, there are things weakening. I mean, I, I guess I'm not going to try to ignore it. Um, we know consumers are are running out of excess savings, and the job market is getting softer. And we know housing has has become a very difficult market. It's unaffordable, and then there's parts of the country where there's huge rise in inventory. Durable goods spending, like on appliances and cars, I mean, it's absolutely tanking. I mean, used car prices are going to fall a lot. And there's an inventory correction. I mean, there's been a lot of destocking of excess goods inventory. Those are what's causing the slowdown. But the mistake I think anyone will make is to say, oh, well, that means this is going to lead to a recession. I mean, number one, housing, durable goods, and inventory are all extremely rate sensitive. So the minute the Fed starts cutting, all of those reverse. But second, the bond market, credit markets, corporate bond spreads, quality spreads, things that you think should be blowing out if there was a recession are absolutely mid-cycle. Um, and look at the stock market. I mean, so I would say if someone is saying that they think a recession's imminent and they're bearish, they're shouting at the market. I mean, I don't know anyone who's made money trying to listen to an economist to, to bet on risk markets. It's really the wrong way to, to invest. Does the current state of the economy concern you, given that so many people are struggling? Um, I don't know if you've seen some of these viral social videos where young people are comparing Walmart grocery bills from three years ago, and they're not up the standard, you know, CPI measure. They're up sometimes a hundred or two hundred percent. Um, and then on the other side, you have the S and P at all time highs, and the people who own assets are richer than ever before. And there's this great divide, and we keep spending as a government and increasing the deficits. Like, how does this play out? Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of inequality. I think it's really unfair uh, because, as you're pointing out. People who are long assets or their lenders or asset owners are benefiting. Um, now, that does mean, by the way, the best hedge, inflation hedge so far has been Bitcoin, right? Because, I mean, if you compare that, you take the Walmart bill and then put the price of Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin's done a lot better than anything and would have been a good hedge. But, uh, you know, for as long as I've been following markets, I've heard the same argument that 40% of the country is miserable. And if you look at the Federal Reserve's survey of consumer finances and you build what you think is a normal budget for people, um, roughly 50% of the country, since I've been following markets, lives paycheck to paycheck. They've never, in fact, 40% of American households are net recipients of transfer of payments from governments. So they don't actually pay taxes. They get payments, like whether it's food stamps, et cetera, or assistance. So America has always had this divide, unfortunately, where roughly half the country doesn't pay taxes as a recipient of transfer payments. And I think when people post these things, 
they're getting a megaphone, which is great. I mean, I'd love to see a way to figure out how to have people suffer less, but it's, it's always been the case, actually. Do you think inflation has really peaked? You know, I think people shouldn't conflate rising stock prices with inflation. We had stocks rise for the last hundred years and we haven't had inflation in all those periods. Inflation, I think people think inflation is so easy to create in the economy. It's pretty hard to create. I mean, look at what's happened with Japan. They've been money printing forever and they can't sustain inflation. Mm -hmm. Inflation is mysterious, but it's disappearing just as quickly as it came. And I think there's many people that still think inflation is the problem. And unfortunately, they're going to be making a lot of investment mistakes. All right, guys, this is the part of the video where I'm going to break down the stocks that were mentioned in the clip. Today, they really only talked about the economy and recession fears. So we'll break down all the main ETFs. And I also wanted to take a look at the biggest stocks in the market, the stocks that are driving this market higher. If this is your first video, welcome. The blue line is the 45-day moving average, and the green line is the 200-day moving average. Now, basically, I just wanted to quickly go through all of these stocks and ETFs and just show you how they're more or less all at supports. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to bounce, but it is looking good if we can hold those levels and then continue up to the upside. So first, with the SPY, you can see we're holding this ascending trend line perfectly, and as long as we can hold this move and keep going to the upside, we'll remain bullish. If we do break this, the entire trend will now be voided, and we're going to have some downside side pressure. The QQQ is more or less the same. We've got this trend line. We've bounced right on it. As long as we can stay above it, we're going to be bullish. If we break below it, this entire trend is now avoided. We're going to have some downside pressure back towards the 200-day moving average. The Russell 2000 is one of the only ones that is not at a support right now. It's more at a resistance, and it has a ways to still be able to come back down and maintain going bullish. You can see we touched this trend line once, twice, three, four times, five times, six times, and then we busted above it. So this is definitely a respectable trend line, so something to keep your eyes on. The Dow Industrial Average has been holding their trend line beautifully. It's also right inside with that 45-day moving average, and it's already on the way back to the upside. So it seems to be holding this trend line better than the rest so far. The first stock we'll take a look at is everybody's favorite, NVIDIA, right now. It is on a magnificent buying opportunity pullback right now, if you ask me. We've just broken under the 45-day moving average, as we did back here. We had a nice flush through it, held this ascending trend line, and maintained going bullish. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen this time, so watch for this ascending trend line, guys. It's going to be a very special level. If we do end up chopping around and breaking through it, this whole move is voided, and we're going to have a lot of downside pressure. Amazon has taken a little break. It got heavily rejected at 200 and sold all the way back off to 180 or so. I hope you're noticing the pattern on all of these stocks, guys. All of the major ETFs and all of the major stocks, they've had a nice sell-off. They've come back to support buying opportunity areas, and we're at critical points. If we can hold these levels, we're going to maintain being bullish, and these are great buying opportunities. And if we break through, you already know we're getting that downside pressure. Tesla, another stock that's been in the news, just absolutely popping off. It had a magnificent run up, couldn't really hold it, flushed down on earnings and came back to this multi-year descending trend line. I thought that's what we might do since this trend line was respected for so long. Normally when you finally break out of it, you come back and make it support before going higher. Looks like that's what we're doing. I wouldn't be surprised if we're not done touching. Google, one of my biggest holdings, is getting absolutely destroyed for some reason. It beat on top and bottom line on earnings and has just been an absolutely beautiful stock. But maybe that's why it's time for a pullback. It's been a little too bullish, and pullbacks are healthy even in uptrends, guys. Apple had a major run, and now we're back right on that 45-day moving average, making it a nice support. So again, we're at a key level. And the same story with Microsoft, guys. All of the major ETFs and major stocks have gone on incredibly bullish runs and now spent the last several weeks pulling back, making a nice healthy correction. As long as these stocks and ETFs hold above the trend lines, the trend remains bullish, and this was just another healthy buying opportunity. It's not too often when you get most of the main ETFs and all of the biggest stocks at or near support and resistance areas. These are definitely going to be a couple critical weeks through earnings to see how everything continues to shake out and if we keep going higher or we go lower. Remember, these are just my thoughts and opinions, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.